Our next comedian coming to this stage uh, has been working all over Denver. Very funny gentleman. Put your hands together for Sammy Anzer. Hey, guys. This is my face. This is it. Um, a lot of times people try to, like, figure out my ethnicity in, like, sneaky ways. So they'll do things like, I don't want to ask him. You ask him. All right. All right. Fine. I'll ask him. Hey, uh, Sammy. <laughs> We ordered a pizza, and it has pepperoni on it. <laughs> or they'll be like, hey, Sammy, when you think about God in your heart, <laughs> how many arms does he have about? <laughs> about. Growing up, though, uh, racism never really bothered me because people would always be racist at me for the wrong reasons. So they'd be like, you stupid P -p Puerto Rican? Uh, and I'm like, mm-mm. Like, you damn dirty Egyptian? Keep going, come on. Uh, when I was growing up, it was just uh, me, my mom, my sister, my aunts. Uh, I was raised by women, and as it pros and its cons, you know, obviously I'm a fantastic dresser, no one here is debating that fact, let's just move on, <laughs> whatever, forget it. Um, but the con is that, like, I'm not the manliest guy in the world, and I never learned how to do really manly things, like whistle. <laughs> and, and when you tell someone you can't whistle, the first thing they do is they go, oh, you can't whistle? I'm like, what kind of jerk are you? Are you going up to people in wheelchairs like, oh, you can't walk? Look at this right here. It was, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, but the real pro is that I, uh, I support women's rights a lot and I support feminism big time. And I used to live in Tennessee where women don't have rights yet, but whatever, they're working on it. Don't judge them, okay? Um, and one time I was at this rally and it got like canceled because so few women showed up to support it. And I was like, you know what? Not me. I'm gonna find a way 
that I could support women. And I was about to give up. I was driving late into the night. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> Until I saw a sign. It was a bright neon sign. And it said, Live, girls. And I was like, you know what? Yes. Uh, the girls and I had the same taste in music. We both loved 90s Nelly with the splash of the Yin Yang Twins. It was crazy. And one of the girls came up to me. She was totally into me. And she was like, what you don't know about me is that I love. Indian guys? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm Sammy Anzer. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Give it up for you all. Sammy Anzer, everybody. Hey, Trans Glender viewers. It's me, Glenn. And I don't give a shit what you're wearing. I accept you. Get in here for a hug. Okay. So how many people were injured during that one? Uh, well, hospital visits, there were 14. Uh, also, he organized a 5K fun run for my dad's, oh, and speak of the devil himself. Here he is. 55 minutes late. Well, come on. You know I'm analog, I haven't changed that watch yet. How are you? What is this, bring your questionably sexy daughter to work day? What do we got going on here? This is Greta, she's from corporate HR. I've called her in specifically to deal with you. All right, to... we have a lot to cover. We certainly do. Talk to you. All right, thanks, Rick. I've been brought in to address some uh, complaints and some reports from your boss and your coworkers. Now, it's not my job to accuse you. It's not my job to get you in trouble. I'm just here to get your side of the story. It says here that you've taken 38 personal days. Are there any mitigating circumstances that I need to know about? Uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Ever since my son froze to death, um, I've really been focusing on my mom's health, um, and she has MS, and Rick knows that. Oh, so My mom has MS. Is that right? Yeah. What kind does your mom have? Um, terminal. Wow. I'm so sorry. Stage three. So Rick is aware of your mother's condition. He didn't bring that up to me. That's really interesting, because I feel like that is, that is a classic mitigating circumstance. Um, case in point, why do you think I'm wearing this? I have to say, a lot of times when people bring me in, I end up finding out is that, um, the person who's being accused is actually a victim. You know what I, f I do? And you know what I feel like metaphorically is happening? We're kids, we're hanging out. We're in the backyard. We walked over to the moist stones. We turn them over, lots of bugs. I think I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, some weird revelations under there. All right, sorry about that. Got my call all wrapped up. Uh, don't you take a look at this? Um, why do you... Why do you want me to look at that? Oh, I feel this is from this is from Glenn's office. Uh, this is something. Well, I'm sorry, I, I can't I can't look at that right now. Can we steer this back to Glenn, maybe? Actually, and uh, Rick, I'm gonna need to talk to you about some of the things we've discussed. If you wouldn't mind waiting outside, I'm not here to accuse you. I just need to get all sides of the story. I'll finish up with Glenn, and then. I think I saw some copies of your softball schedule on the copier. You might want to grab that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of softball, I want to take you to a minor league baseball game. Only because I want to see you react to the t-shirt cannon? You know, it's so funny that you say that because most of my t-shirts are from t-shirt cannons. Are you familiar with the concept of a sartori? Because I feel like I'm having an awakening right now. This is so weird. I think I had a dream about you last night. Do you want to get out of here? God, yes. But uh, I actually have to finish writing this up. We should start talking about getting you into management. Did you send a photo to your coworkers of a tattoo you got of the actress Juliette Binoche? I love the movie Chocolat, so we. Oui. Uh, did you hire a petting zoo to come to the company? It wasn't so much as a petting zoo as it was a full animal experience. Were you aware that Sue is deathly allergic to foul birds? No, I was not. And I'm glad I didn't order extra quail. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. For Elise Kearns. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you, Rachel, for such an amazing handshake. Is there anything worse than like a floppy, flaccid handshake? And it's always from some girl named Larissa. She's like, hi, I'm Larissa. And I'm like, hi, I feel like I'm choking on blood. I feel like I'm trying to swallow paper towels. Like your handshake hurts my throat. Because I can taste your essence. And it tastes like you stirred your Cosmo with a reheated hot dog. It's gross. So I'm Elise Kearns. It's very nice to be here, you guys. Thank you for having me. I love doing stand-up comedy. I think at some point we all want to take after our parents. Um, and my dad is also a narcissist stand-up comic. Um, <laughs> He is, and he did not, you guys, when I was a child, he did not travel the country as a road comic and have sex with all of the waitresses and drink all of the alcohol and do all of the cocaine. He didn't. He didn't do that. He did. <laughs> he did do it. My dad did a lot of cocaine when I was a kid, you guys. My dad is the reason that I don't do cocaine because he did it all. <laughs> he did all the cocaine. 2018 as a society doesn't do cocaine like we used to. You know why? Rick Kearns in the 90s. That's why. That's why. I think he blames that lifestyle on stand-up comedy though, you know? So he didn't want me doing stand-up comedy. In fact, he did an interview with the Denver Post a few years ago and they said, we hear your daughter's trying stand-up comedy. How do you feel about that? And he said, I'd rather she be a stripper. <laughs> He said that to the Denver Post. <laughs> because at least it's an honest living. And I totally tried to defend myself. I'm like, Dad, I was in a contest last night. I won $30. And the 10 other comics, I won $30. And he's like, you could have made 100 times that stripping. <laughs> yeah. There's a really unfortunate suspicion in Denver comedy right now that as a female comedian, in order to get booked on shows and be successful, you have to have sex with the male comics, which is such bullshit. Uh, that's never been my experience. I'm pretty though. <laughs> I don't know what ugly people. I've always felt that a blowjob will suffice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't give blowjobs. I'm a lesbian. Surprise! <laughs> I know you can't tell because I'm not wearing the traditional coveralls and painting someone's deck right now. But it is true, I'm a lesbian. And as a lesbian, I have, uh, I mean, I have 10 times the amount of dicks that a guy has, right? Because you just have one, right? You just have the one, is it just the one penis that you have? I can't remember, you just have the one thing hanging on there, just the one. Mine can go like this. Can yours go like this? I know that you guys can move your dicks, right? Like you can move your dick a little bit. You can like do a dick kegel. And it's like. Are you doing it? You guys can move your dicks like the amount that a depressed person can move their head off the couch when they're sad. Like. not very good. <laughs> Ladies, I invented something for us for the most mortifying time in our lives, and that is when you accidentally toot in a public restroom. <laughs> because as the person usually not tooting in a public restroom, I'm such an asshole. I'm like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing for you. I know you're gonna wait in here for like 10 extra minutes so no one will see who came out of the stall, but I'm gonna wait too. So I can tell my friends what a sick bitch you are. That's her, she's the one, she it in the bathroom. And we all act like that, don't act like you don't act like that. Okay, so here's what I invented for when you do accidentally let one pop out. Okay, you toot and then you immediately throw your head under the stall and go, fuck you! <laughs> Don't 
give them any time to be an asshole to you. You be an asshole first. Fuck you! <laughs> okay. Okay. I recently oh. got broken up with my friend, my girlfriend's friend told her I tooted in the bathroom and that was it for us. <laughs> but I got broken up with and I'm like a disgusting single person. I had no idea how gross I am. And uh, I think I'll find love again though, but my therapist doesn't. <laughs> my therapist, Gloria, doesn't. My therapist, Gloria, at Kaiser Permanente, does not think I will find love again. <laughs> I really like going to therapy at Kaiser Permanente because they don't weed out the therapists who also have Asperger's. <laughs> like, I'm telling Gloria, I think I'll find love again, Gloria, I think I'll find love again, and she was like, probs not. <laughs> That's my time, you guys. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Looks like a lock's run out, fellas. It couldn't have gone far. This big wall would have stopped it. Better think of something quick. Those heads are getting taller. Oh my god, I can't believe it. You're not easy to convince. Oh, I think I'm going to dampen me knickers. Wait a minute. This isn't all of you. I can't speak for the others, but I think I'm all here. No, she's right. You're missing someone. Well, me mother passed away when I was very young. No, where's Pete? Who? Peter. Pete Best. He hasn't been in the group for a long time now. Oh. Well, sorry for the bother, then. We only got excited because we thought he was still with you chaps. Glad to see you keep up with the band, mate. Well, we'll be on our way now. Cheers. That was odd. So what do we do now? Hmm, we could see what's going on in America. Fancy a trip? Yeah, it'd be nice to have some peace and quiet for a change. So, what'd they say? Well, they didn't seem to know you at first. What? Yeah, but Paul remembered you after he thought about it for a second. They didn't say anything about my drumming skills. Well, it was cut short when they didn't seem to care. Did they at least say they were going to look me up? Who are you again? Ah. Well, who would have thought excited girls could catch a moving vehicle? And who would have thought excited boys would let them catch it? Maybe you need a more inconspicuous form of transportation. Something with a bit more mystery to it. A mysterious tour bus. Hmm. Well, why people would want to see us in person is a mystery to me. I see myself every day and it's not all that great. Well, of course they want to see you lads in person. Everyone wants to see the famous Beatles with the fabulous Pete Best. Who? Oh, come now. You can't tell me you'd forget your most popular mate. Cynthia? No. Pete Best. The best. I bet if you kept old Pete around, you'd be bathing in enough money to afford a proper run vehicle. And you sure wouldn't be sitting here on this hill looking like fools. Well, this is as smart as we can look. Tell you what. I don't want you broke down here outside Strawberry Fields forever. Hmm, it's really nothing to get hung about. I'm on my way to Mum's for some honey pie and tea, but I'll ring up one of me chums that'll be dying to tow you away. Dying to tow us away? Tow you today. Looks like we have a little time on our hands. Sure, this'll give me a chance to write a few songs before we get back to the studio. Just a matter of time before they give me a call. Ah, bugger. I can't get me a proper tan, the bloody sun keeps moving. Well, why don't you follow it? Just you watch, we'll get me back into that band and show them just who needs who. Roar, it's been a hard day's night. Fight you. Soon you'll be singing songs made famous by the best, meaning me, Pete Best. <laughs> Roar, and I've been working like a dog. Roar. Oh, you'll change your tune once you hear my latest, Don't Scratch on Mumsy. I don't think the sea agrees with me. Take it out for a drink and settle your differences. A land lover, eh? Maybe you should take a break for a while and let someone spell you for a bit. He'll be fine, he just needs the water to stay still for a few minutes. Yeah, once the water becomes solid, me head'll be more jam and less jelly. Say, you're the lads from Liverpool. And some would say from our mothers. Don't you boys play that big hit, Don't Scratch on Mumsy? I'd hope not. Really now? It goes something like this. Raw, eight days a week, I love you. Raw. Hey, your bird can sing. Aye, that he can. But what I think he meant to sing is, Mumsy's on the bus, she's eating fish and chips, but soon her face will puff up like a wire. <laughs> Anybody? Maybe someone should get him a cracker. Won't you please, please help me? Hmm, this bloke just gave me an idea. Bloody hell! What's MBE stand for? I think it stands for milk, butter, and eggs. Nah, I think it has something to do with medicine. You've never made anyone get better. I've never made him feel bad. Good morning, boys. What's that? I say, good morning, good morning. You only have to say it once, we catch on pretty quick. <laughs> 
Uh, quite right. So before we meet Her Majesty, there's some proper etiquette we have to review. I just thought we'd say hello. Well, this is exciting. Pete Best and the Beatles here receiving such an honour as this. Well, you're right on one of those counts, Chief. What do you mean? We don't bloody have. Hey, Paul, looks like your weather's changed. Ah, oh, bugger, we have to call the royal contractor to fix that hole where the rain gets in. Who here would like to try some royal hors d'oeuvres? I say, eat up, lads. I made the stuffed peppers myself. Ah, yes, the sergeant's peppers are served for special occasions like our Lonely Hearts Club singles mixer. I hear that's where the real awards are handed out. Oh, no, I'd love to stick around for the rest of the ceremony, but I have to go. It's time for tea and meet the wife. I never miss it. Don't worry, we'll cover for you. You know, many years from now, when you're 64, you'll show these off to the grandkids. Hmm, wonder if I'll be needed when I'm 64. I'm more worried about who'll need me for supper. After the ceremony, you'll be playing for us at the benefit of Sir Robert Kite, won't you? We're especially interested in seeing the exceptional antics of your drummer. Well, Ringo stopped learning tricks after he mastered fetching the paper. No, no, your other drummer, Pete Best. We've only had one drummer at a time. And sometimes less than that. Oh, come on, didn't you guys get famous from that song he wrote? Pickled carrots for pickled eyes? Excuse me, but does anyone know whose triumph is double pop? Why? We're towing it away right now. What? Ah! Well, she was an interesting fella. Hey there, what's your name? Rita. Are you with the Royal Tea Service? No, I'm a meter maid. Hmm, interesting. Wanna go to dinner? Hello, sir. Did you read the news today? Oh, boy. This is a sex pot comedy production.